Live from the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, please welcome the host of Ken Boxer Live, Mr. Ken Boxer. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Ken Boxer Live. I'm your host, Ken Boxer. With us this half hour is the multi-talented author and relationship expert, Laurel House. Now, you may recognize her as a frequent guest on the E! News channel. She's also very busy as an international dating coach, flirting expert, and columnist for the Santa Barbara News Press with her weekly column, She Said, He Said. She made MTV's Made It Girl Mentor with well over 12 million views on YouTube. She's, that's quite a testament to her appeal and her popularity. So let's welcome Laurel House to our show. Welcome to Ken Boxer Live. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. Yes, it's thank you for coming. Here. Laurel, what makes a great relationship? And this is a broad question for you, but just let's start there. What makes a great relationship? Relationship. Well, it really depends first on the individual, obviously. You know, what, what is someone looking for? But overall, the best relationships are two whole people. So I'm amazing. You're amazing. Let's get together and be fantastic. If you go into a relationship as a half of a person, it's, you know, then, then you end up being needy. Then you end up not contributing anything to the relationship. It's like the Jerry Maguire line, you know, you complete me. It, I mean, it's, it's horseshit, honestly, <laughs> because I don't want you to complete me. Please don't. I want you to be whole, and I want to be whole. Now, the problem is, if someone has their own life and it's too much of their own life, then they are too independent, and you don't want that either. So you want interesting, independent people, partners. So you want to be on the same team. It's not, I'm going to one-up you. I'm better than you. You don't want that. It's, but how do you actually find that person, though? I mean, that's, isn't that what it's all about? <laughs> that's the hard thing. I mean, where, I, mean, where, I mean, the internet is yeah. a good place. I yeah, mean, there are so many but, places to find people. Internet, meetups, introductions, um, activities, just in life, at restaurants. It, there are a lot of, of great places. But, but the key is you have to be your authentic self and your best version of yourself. So, so many people are afraid of getting what I call raw, being vulnerable on a date, being themselves. They go on a date and they're this, this facade of a person of, you know, like me, I'm going to be perfect for you. Well, what's interesting about you? What makes you stand out? So on a date, you really want to just to be you and not be afraid of that. But what do you do with the, the date that you come across and you, within the first two minutes you're going, oh God, I got, you know, I want this over with. You have the friend call on the phone and say there's an emergency. What do you, yeah. how do you plan well, for that? Well, clearly you didn't pre-qualify. So that's the problem first. I, my clients, I have them pre-qualify heavily first, which means very specific questions before you go on the date. And that's if it's online. So specific questions, online dating. Then you send specific email exchanges and really get to know each other. These are long, these are substantive emails. Then you get on the phone and you read each other's energies and you see if there are any red flags. You might even do a little bit of back-end research, Googling, Facebook, seeing if they really are legit. Then you go on the date. And by then, you know each other pretty well. But what percentage actually among your clients actually take it to the next step and they, you know, hang with that that significant other? Well, if you're coached the right way, and I hope that I'm coaching my clients the right way, then it's very soon. People can look for their significant other for years, decades, but once you're on purpose, so you're dating with a very specific purpose, and you and you know what that is going into the date, then it can be pretty, pretty fast. I mean, within a couple of weeks, months, maybe a year. Can you look at two people initially and say, they're right for each other just by looking? I need to talk to them. I need to hear what their attitudes are and see what their energy is. Because just by looking, I mean, the thing about looks is I always say screw tall, dark, and handsome. Because looks really don't matter when it comes to love, right? It's, it's can you have a conversation? Do they make you feel good? Are your core values aligned? Turn off the lights, you know? Do you have anything in common? Do you, do you feel like you're wanted at the end of the day? Do you feel needed? Do you feel loved? Do you feel supported? And, and, and those are the things that, that really do matter. So I, you know, I mean, maybe you should just do blindfold dating at first because I have my clients, especially online dating, I don't allow them to look at the photos. Uh, not oh, really? at the beginning, no. What about those type of datings where they go from one table to the next? What are they? Speed dating. Speed like, dating. Uh, yeah. I mean, the problem with speed dating <laughs> is that you really don't get to know each other at all. You have a script. 
I'm Laurel, I'm a dating coach, I'm this and this and oh, who cares, honestly? I mean, let's talk about things that actually matter. Okay, well let's talk about things that actually <laughs> matter. Let's okay. talk about something that you, okay, you've, you're on YouTube, 12 million hits. Yeah. And you know, people come to you all the time about dating and things for your expertise, but you actually have something you talk about sex tapes yes and you're actually for pro sex tapes absolutely but you always hear about the the famous person who is going oh oh boy yeah why did i do this yeah so let you we're going to see a clip okay. about that but why why do you well want... because sex tapes really add a little bit of spice and intimacy they also show you how sexy you can actually be it sort of breaks down that level of insecurity of well, my guy is looking at porn and I could never be that sexy. You can be that sexy. Watch yourself. Okay, let's watch you. Okay. Okay, Laurel House, let's watch. People have such fears about sex tapes. And I say, screw it. <laughs> Just do it. I think sex tapes can actually benefit a relationship as long as you keep it in the relationship. And the only way that you can be sure that that sex tape is gonna stay in your relationship is by maintaining control of that tape. Like that tape never goes to his house unless you are holding the camera and you guys are watching it together and then you take the camera back and he has not copied it. It is not emailed. It is not put up on YouTube unless it is a um, protected and private video that no one else has access to. So that's what I'm saying be smart. Now, now that I've said all the smart stuff about it, have fun. A sex tape can serve many purposes. So in a relationship with someone who you trust and love, it's a great way to spice things up a little bit. You know, it's like your own private porn, but even better because you see it and you're watching yourself and, and you see how sexy you can be. A lot of chicks do not realize how sexy we actually are. And our guys are looking at the magazines and we think, oh, I wish I could be that sexy. I wish that he would look at me that way. I wish that he would see photos of me being that sexy. Or if he's watching a porn, I wish that I could look like that on camera. Well, you can. Okay, so maybe you don't have these like gigantic boobs and you're not that thin, but you still look really hot. And having your own porn, having your own sex tape, will show you that. It'll also show you just how exciting your sex can be. And of course, you're gonna play it up for the camera. You're not just gonna lay there like, uh, look, are you almost done? <laughs> you're not gonna do that. And then you get to watch it after and think, oh, wow, that looks hot. I look really sexy and he looks so good. And it, it just might spark a little something extra in your relationship. So I am all for the personal sex tape. So you have your camera set up on a tripod, and if it's close enough, you can also, if you want to, grab it during the sex. So you can do close-ups on certain parts if you want, and then you can put it back down so it gets the whole scene. <laughs> I actually haven't done that. I just came up with it. But anyway, screw the fear of sex tapes and just shoot one with your guy and watch it together. And then, if you feel comfortable, destroy it. You can always shoot another. Oh, yes. Laurel House is yeah. our guest. Now, when you watch that, it's the, <laughs> there's some caveats, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you have to protect yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of celebrities do the sex tapes. They get leaked. Some of them be, have become famous because of them. And the reason is because they're not smart about it. So if you're going to shoot a sex tape, don't be stupid. You know, have fun, but maintain control of that tape. So with the digital age, you know, you can shoot it on your iPhone, watch it, maybe watch it a couple of times, and then delete it. <laughs> <It's>, you, <laughs> need to, you need to be in control. And also at the beginning, before you shoot it, make sure that you're both in agreement that you're shooting this tape. It's not just a hidden camera. 
Well, what would happen if you did find out that your boyfriend had a hidden camera in the bedroom? I mean... What would you do? Um, well, I think it's, it's grounds for a breakup. It's also... <laughs> I mean, it's, the problem is, obviously, you're not communicating. And, and communication is the most essential element of a relationship. So if you aren't communicating and, and suddenly he's shooting a sex tape of you guys, I mean, that's, that really is an invasion of privacy and intimacy. Well, let's say your boyfriend were to surprise you. Hmm. And that was the surprise yeah. with a sex tape mm -hmm. that he put together for you. Yeah. Would you look at it and go, thank you so very much, let's keep it between us? Or would you feel like you've been violated in some way? Um, I would say, you've got to be shitting me. You, you did this, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many bells I'm going to hit in this you, You've missed a couple. <laughs> Come on. Get on it, Ken. A little slow. <laughs> Um, no, it's an invasion of privacy. It's not okay. If you have a conversation ahead of time of, I want to start doing some really sexy things together, I want to start playing it up and spicing things you know, up in a different way, then you have anticipation. And then you have the conversation of anything goes. If I want to surprise you with a sex tape, okay. If I want to tie you up, all right. If I want to do whatever it is, fine. But you know ahead of time that these things might happen. And that's actually very sexy because then you have the anticipation. You never know in the next month when something is suddenly going to get really hot in the bedroom. I had a friend of mine who once told me he tied a girl out. I've never said this on television, let alone. I bet just he's going to be thrilled no, listen. that you're sharing it. <laughs> Ken Marcus, you remember the photographer? <laughs> he said that at one time he tied this, his girlfriend up. Mm -hmm. And what he did was he went into the other room to the kitchen, made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and just ate it yeah. for about an hour. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and with all this anticipation And then for didn't her, do anything? Didn't do a thing. Well, well, that's ridiculous. And then he just came back and was... Well, why is she going to trust you after you do that? At least go and give her some I'm really good sex. I mean, come on. That was no, the... no. I mean, that's, that's definitely part of anticipation is tying the girl up and, you know, teasing her a little bit by walking away, by coming back and doing a little tease, by blowing on her ear, by kissing her neck, you know, by saying, by just doing some dirty talking. And that's great. But, and even if you're going to go walk away and make a sandwich, okay, as long as she's not in pain or cold, because girls get cold, so you want to make sure she's not cold. All right. Um, but it's okay to do as long as you actually follow through. Right, right. But, okay, <laughs> how about make, how do you get somebody to, a man in particular, how do you get men to fall in love with you? Hmm. What's the trick if there's such a thing? What, deep, what, what's the quote? Deep, hard, and fast. Yeah, deep, hard, quote. and fast. Yeah. How do you get that? Well, you have the X appeal. So basically, it the starts ex the X appeal. Okay. Yeah. So the X appeal is basically that you are enticing, that you have this sexy side. Um, you, you flirt with him. You also are, you show him that there's more to you that he wants to know. So it's about, I'm, I'm talking to you in the way that you would do it. It's about body language. It's about how you move your face, the tone of voice that you use. And it's also about what you say. So getting raw, being vulnerable immediately, getting deep. I always say go down before you go up. <laughs> Because like a skyscraper, if you just build a skyscraper on the ground, that mm -hmm. thing's going to fall down. You know, you might be able to build it up and it looks really pretty, but it's going to fall down. So if you want something that's, that's deep, you're going to go down. Same with relationships. So on that first date, or even just at a bar when you're talking, mm -hmm. you want to talk about something that actually matters. Make him feel. If you tap into his heart, you've got him. I mean, men are like are they like want to mollusks. Feel important too. Yeah, they're like mollusks. So, so they're two shells. Okay. So, if you rip off one shell of his protective layer and you expose him, and so now he's feeling and he hasn't felt in a really long time, then he's kind of feels vulnerable. So he's going to fix himself to you, and you've got him. Okay. You brought another clip. Yes. Can you describe what we're about to yeah, see? Yeah, this is basically about, about the one thing that almost every woman, or not, well, yeah, a lot of women are lacking. Even the most beautiful women who are smart and successful, and you think that they're the total package, but they can't land a fourth or sometimes even a second date, and it's this one thing. Okay, let's watch okay. and find that answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Laurel House. You know those women who are intimidatingly beautiful? but aren't in a relationship and it's not because they don't want to be. There's one thing, one crucial thing that's lacking. They aren't alluring. Sure, they're pretty. In fact, they're pretty much perfect. But 
they're missing something. That that thing. It's more often the late bloomer beautiful girls who are great at it because they had to learn how to entice a guy without depending on her beauty. So how do you be seductive and alluring and sexy? By feeling it. Then by having the strength to show your vulnerability and your weakness. Once you show that side of you, that raw, honest, authentic, passionate, vulnerable side of you, then you start to be alluring and sexy. Then you show depth. Then you make that guy interested in what's hiding deep inside you because he knows there's more there and he wants to explore it. He wants to see what's happening. And I want to know more too. <laughs> Laurel House, we want to know more. Yes. Talk about flirtation okay. in relationships. How important is that on a first date? Essential. I mean, flirting is, is essential prior to the first date. It's during the pre-qualifying you need to flirt. Or else, what, are you going to be friends? You know, what are you looking for, a business associate? No, you're looking for a romantic partner. So you need to show them that you're interested. Men oftentimes get nervous. Women don't believe it, but men actually get nervous on a date. They get they, they don't believe that the woman is actually interested. So she needs to flirt. She needs to build up his ego, make him feel really good, and Take them down a little bit sometimes too. Okay, <laughs> flirt, flirt with us right now. Flirt with me a little bit. You want to see every, her flirt? Let's see. What so, would, what um, would you... so we're at dinner. We're eating. Okay, you're eating a steak. Okay. I really love that steak, but you know what? It's a little bit. It's a little bit well done for me. I like my steaks really raw. It's, but that steak, <laughs> it's my mouth is literally dripping right now. I bet though you can make a better steak. I, you could make me a better steak. I just might let you. <laughs> I'd like to make you a better steak. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'd like to make you a better steak. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, when? Uh, barbecue at my house. <laughs> a barbecue. But the flirtations would. I always think of when you're flirt, flirting. It's you know, the batting of the eyes. Flirting is a lot of things. It starts with the eyes. So it's something that I call the you flirt strategy and it's with the eyes. So it's an up, down, up. So you start, a woman is going to look at you and think, wow, I think that he's really great. He has potential. And then, I don't know. I don't know if he's good enough for me. I'm going to give him a shot. So you see from the beginning, I'm looking at you like, wow, meh. Right. Yeah. I wish we get close up of your eyes because they're <laughs> stunning. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, it's about eyes. It's about body language. It's about just the way that you're dressing too. So many women, particularly in relationships, if it's been a couple of months or years, they end up not putting effort into it anymore. They stop flirting with their guy, which is a huge mistake. They think, well, you know, I'm already married to him. I don't need to flirt with him anymore. Look. He hasn't forgotten what a beautiful woman looks like. He hasn't forgotten how it feels to feel like a man. You need to do that. The more feminine a woman is, the more masculine a man feels. The more masculine a man is, the more feminine a woman feels. So you need to play up those gender roles with each other. If that means wearing a short skirt and whispering something into his ear when you go on a date together, even as a married couple, do it. Don't go out and talk about the kids. Go out and talk about sexy things. Well, you you had I remember reading somewhere where when it came to a first date, yeah, very important that the man pays. Oh, absolutely. Explain yeah, yeah, that. Not even Ex not even a question. That. Explain <laughs> that. Well, paying is a very masculine thing to do. It's that is taking care of your woman. A woman is showing up. She's putting effort into her looks. She's also making him feel amazing because she's there. She's giving everything she is to that situation. A man oftentimes equates success with money. You know, you do a good job at, at your job, you're going to get a raise. The more money you make, the more powerful you are, the better you are at what you do. So the same thing goes with paying for a date. If you don't pay, if you go Dutch, you're friends. You want him to be excited about you. You want him to show, you want him to walk into a restaurant and be like, I own this. <laughs> but it will also yeah. matter where the restaurant, which will, where it was and what type yeah. of restaurant? He's choosing the restaurant. So if he chooses an expensive restaurant, sorry, that was your choice and now you're going to pay for it. Should, well, should the, the woman order everything she wants or should no. she? No, she needs to follow his lead. So ask, are you going to order an app? Are you ordering a salad? And then you follow his lead. When he says, should we order a bottle of wine or a glass? 
you know, I, I can go either way. I really enjoy wine. I could also do a cocktail. What, what are you in the mood for? Well, so allow him to make those choices. Should you go to a place that you've both been to before or never been before? It really doesn't no matter. It, it really doesn't matter. It's just, it, the point is that he needs to pay and that when he pays, you're not doing the fake reach. You're not doing any, well, you know, even the fake offer. You're not doing that. He puts down the credit card and you say, Thank you. I really appreciate that. I had a great time with you tonight. And then that night or the next day, you text or call and say, thank you so much. I had a wonderful time. I look forward to seeing you again. You're basically reinforcing good behavior. Thank you for doing a good job. You paid. I'm now telling you, you did a good job. Now, women can pay in other ways, not on the first or the second date, maybe the third or the fourth. They can do things like a picnic and they have a beautiful picnic basket with incredible cheeses and meats or wherever. And that's going to costs some money, they can cook a dinner, which also costs a lot of money to buy that steak, to buy all of those ingredients. They can do a special massage at a resort or something. So women are paying in those ways, but they are not going to put the credit card down at the dinner table. I used to have a girlfriend who would only pay with an ice cream cone when we'd go out. Pay with an ice cream cone. Right, let's, you know, like I would buy the big dinner and, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay for the ice cream. <laughs> okay. You know, that's how it yeah. is. But you had um, in one of your videos, you, you talk about the power panty. Yeah. Never heard that term before. You heard about the, the power, power lunch, the power tie. Yeah. All of these powerful things that men have. What but about the chicks? The power The power panty. panties. We, where is our power coming from? Yes. So and we you have, let us know you have a power panty on now. I have power too. panties on currently. Okay. Yes. So yeah. tell us about the <laughs> power panty. So the power panties are red underwear. And it's according to feng shui belief, the color red enhances your luck and confidence in any situation. So dating, a meeting, anywhere. So okay. it's... Let's watch it though. You want to watch it? Yeah. Because okay, you... it gets a little sexy because I'm actually going to show underwear, but you know, it's not the ones I'm wearing, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> Let's watch. Men have power ties. Chicks have power panties. This is why I have an entire drawer. I'm not kidding. I have a drawer filled with red panties and they are not for guys. This is not because I'm trying to look sexy for you. In fact, I generally don't wear red for guys because I, you know, I save them. These are my power panties. This is, <laughs> I wear them for work. So they're not necessarily all sexy either. So when it comes to power panties, you know, you can do the G-string. These are the hanky pankies that they're super comfortable and that's why I have entirely too many. You can go super sexy if you want, but remember these aren't for him. So if you like feeling this up your ass, perfect. Go ahead, do it. But they're not for him. These are for you. If those make you feel even sexier, if those make you feel even more confident and even more powerful in your meeting, by all means, wear them. You can even do full butt. That's fine. It's not for him. It's for you. So ladies, it is time to go to the store, go online. I don't care where you get them. Take your panties and dye them all red if you want. Get some writ dye. The point is, you need some power panties and you need a lot of them. Because every time you have a big meeting, every time you have an important phone call, anytime you have anything important when it comes to business, you need to be wearing those panties. I know I do. <laughs> Could you imagine if you're just joining us? Oh. We're wondering what you're doing. Yeah. Where did that, you said it was a, an Eastern... It's a feng shui thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When I learned about the power panties, I was in a meeting and this chick comes in in a, a outfit that had no red and she's wearing these bright red shoes. And I said, what's with the red shoes? They don't match the outfit. I don't understand. She said, well, it's because of power feng shui. And I thought, you know, I'm going to use the power feng shui, feng shui in another way. And so I created the power panties. But it's not just about in dating. Now, yes, wear power panties if you want on a date. But you can also do it in a meeting. You can do it anywhere where you need that little injection of confidence. But you really believe it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? That's what matters. That I believe it. So if you go into a situation that you're nervous and you think, it's okay, I have my power panties on, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine.
You just, because you have that extra knowing, it's your own inner, everything's okay, I can be confident because of this. It's, it's, I call it the power feminine. So you want to be that powerful feminine force. You want to be super feminine and sweet and nurturing and flirtatious, but you also want to get exactly what you want. And you can do that with, with power panties okay. and by being in a power feminine. Okay, um, God, the show's going by so quickly. I want what to... happens when you talk about sex. <laughs> Yes, I guess so. But I want to find out about your your new column. Yeah. At the news press. Yeah, Let's she talk said about he that. said. Okay. Yeah. Notice how it's she said, he said, not yes. he said, she yeah, said, which she is easier first. to say. Yeah, she comes first always. Okay, so, so right? about that column. Yeah. So it's um, myself and Steve Hansen and it's we're both dating experts and we talk about our opinions when it comes to everything dating. So the, the one that's coming out right now is on how to avoid the friend zone. Um, there have been others on how to turn a first date into a second, third, and fourth date. We're gonna address why or when you should have sex, even if it's on the first date, is that okay or not? Um, <laughs> so it's, it's really, we're gonna get edgy, we're gonna really talk about everything dating, mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's really fun. Yeah. yeah. But do you get you know, arguments over even the topics of what you're going to do? Sometimes. Um, I, I have a book that's coming out in February. It's called Screwing the Rules, The No Games Guide to Love. And that's my website is screwingtherules.com. And I do have, as you've seen, some opinions that might be a little controversial. And so sometimes Steve won't agree 100% about what, what I say. Um, and then we'll talk about it. We'll talk. We communicate through it until he, until he agrees with We've me. We've only about 30 seconds. How did you meet your boyfriend? Um, Steve. Very quick, in <laughs> Steve. Anyone else? Yes, yeah, Steve, a, of course. At a dating event. Yeah. At a dating event? Yeah, okay. he was the MC and I was the dating coach. And is it all methodology? Meth <laughs> all these methodologies that you're going through, it's all... Oh, absolutely. One, I, one I, I initially time. was using his, him as an example of how to flirt, and I accidentally fell for him, which was not the goal, but it happened, so that was it. Laura House, yeah. thank you so very It went by too quickly. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be looking forward to that new book, yes. as well as the column she in, said, said. in the news press. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's it for another edition of Ken Boxer Live. If you've missed any part of our interview this evening, you can view this show or any previous shows on our website at KenBoxerLive.com. Also remember, tune in to some of our upcoming shows, which will include Eddie Munster actor Butch Patrick, actors Alan Thicke, Lost in Space Billy Moomy, and actress Mariel Hemingway. Okay, so for now, my guest Laurel House, and for my director Nick Freddie, and for my entire production crew, I'm Ken Boxer saying we'll see you next week on Ken Boxer Live. Good night, everybody. <laughs>